there's a lot of classifying that goes on. Maybe you noticed it in the general chemistry class you took. We've got all this information and we classify things. And so that's, we're kind of being introduced here to how organic chemicals are classified. So alkanes, we'll talk a lot about alkanes. Alkanes are open chain binary compounds of carbon and hydrogen. So all of the bonds are single bonds. Is this going to be, sat are these saturated or unsaturated with only single bonds? They're saturated. So that means these are saturated. That A didn't come out very well. So these are saturated. And they're hydrocarbons, right? They contain carbon and hydrogen. So these are saturated hydrocarbons. What do we mean by open chain? Um, this gets into this word, acyclic or acyclic. A is a prefix that means without. So acyclic means without circles. So acyclic means that these have ends. They're not looped around on each other. We'll study cyclic compounds later where the carbon chain comes around and attaches to itself. These are going to be the open chain. These can be straight or branched. We'll talk about that. And the general formula of these is CnH2n plus 2. So if n equals, let's say n equals 3, then the formula would be C3. And then we say, well, what's 2 times 3 is 6, 2n plus 2 is 8, and so C3H8. And when we look at the structures, we'll see why it is that formula. But these are the alkanes. There are three-dimensional ways of representing different hydrocarbons. And of course, these molecules are three-dimensional. So we have the dashed wedge line structures, which you may have encountered in general chemistry. The wedge is supposed to be coming out of the plane. The hashed one is supposed to be going into, and the straight lines are in the plane. So if we look at that one, we've got two hydrogens in the plane of the screen, and this bottom one is sticking out and then the other one is sticking back. So this is an actual model of the second one, ethane. As you can see, it's not flat. How do you draw that to show that it's three-dimensional? Well, it's a little tricky. Here's the picture of the ball and stick model. So the ball and stick model, like its name says, uses balls and sticks. And that's what the familiar chemistry model set is like. It can be really helpful to have one of those to make these things so that you can see them. So we take something like this and represent it uh, a little more simply in this way. So that the dark wedges come out at you and the dashed ones are going behind. And then there's also space filling models. Space filling models are a lot more like what the actual molecule would look like. They're, they're so small that we can't get good pictures of them. But the space filling model is a better approximation of how they look. So we will be using these sorts of models and pictures throughout to help us understand. Because there's no one way of drawing a molecule that's good for all situations, and that's why we have so many. So those are three-dimensional ways. And then we have two-dimensional ways because paper is two-dimensional, and the computer screen is two-dimensional, and so it's, for the most part, easier to, to use a two-dimensional drawing. So we have expanded structural formula. Well, that doesn't show up very. The screen's a funny size. 
expanded structural formulas and condensed. So all of these terms are not meant to be cryptic. Okay, they're not meant to confuse you. They're trying to be descriptive. An expanded formula is going to show you more than the condensed. The condensed is going to take up less space and it's going to be easier to draw. So let's look at this middle one, ethane. This is the expanded formula. Here we are not trying to show the arrangement in three-dimensional space of the carbons and the hydrogens. We're just trying to show how they're connected. That these two carbons are bonded to each other with a single bond. This carbon is bonded to three hydrogens and this carbon is bonded to three other hydrogens. It shows how they are connected. Okay, It's not trying to give us a picture of what it looks like. It's like we took this model and ran over it with a steamroller and flattened it. Okay, And we use these because they're easy. When you get bigger and bigger molecules, this gets to be a lot of C's and H's and lines to draw. And we'll make you draw some of these bigger ones as expanded structural formulas and you'll get tired of making all the little H's. Like, isn't there a better way? Yeah, there is a better way. The condensed formula. So the condensed formula, here we've got this central atom and it's got four hydrogens bonded to it. So instead of drawing all of them, we just say CH4, meaning that these four hydrogens are bonded to that one carbon. Then over here, the first carbon has three hydrogens and the second carbon has three hydrogens. And this bond is showing what's happening between the two carbon atoms. Hydrogen always makes one bond. So hydrogen is never in the middle of the chain. The hydrogens are always on the outside of the molecule. And then here's propane, a little more complicated. There's three carbons in the middle of this, and they're connected to each other. The first carbon has three hydrogens bonded to it, so we say CH3. Then there's a single bond, so a single line. The middle carbon has two hydrogens, so CH2, and then the one on the end has CH3. This is where that CNH2N plus 2 comes from. Because if we look at this, for each carbon, there are two hydrogens, right? There's the hydrogens up here and the hydrogens up there, down there. So that's a total of six for that three, for three carbons. So if n equals two, three, sorry, n equals three, then two n is six. But then you've got one carbon on each end, and that's where you get the plus two. So we got this guy and this guy. So that's the plus two. So this is C. 3H8. You see that? So we're going to use these different types of formulas all throughout the semester, and you need to understand what they're meaning. And it'll take a little practice at first. Then we have what's called a skeletal structural formula. So what's the difference between a human body and a skeleton from a human body? The skeleton's just the bones, right? And all the muscles and the skin and stuff isn't there. A skeletal structural formula is looking at just the carbons. So here's the condensed structural formula for this compound. And just for grins, let's draw the expanded. So there's one, two, three, four, five carbons bonded together. We run out of space here. And each of these has to have four bonds. In a hydrocarbon, an alkane, it's going to be all single bonds, and so those missing bonds, because each carbon needs four bonds, are going to be with hydrogens. So that's the expanded formula for this condensed formula. 
the skeletal structural formula, we're just going to look at the carbons. And we're going to pretend that all the hydrogens are just invisible. So we just write the carbons. So when we look at this, we, we're not trying to tell you that that's just five carbon atoms in a molecule. It's kind of an abbreviation, a shorthand. And as an organic chemist, you understand that there are hydrogens involved. Any questions? <laughs>